Hey guys, welcome to Learn to Crypto. It's uh, Justin, episode three, talking about decentralized finance, DeFi, and what it is. Decentralized finance, by definition, represents financial applications which can run on blockchains. There's a few different definitions I'm going to go through. I'll chat about the pros and cons versus traditional banking as well. With uh, decentralized finance, you can kind of think of it as people can get together on the blockchain and put uh, their money up, whether it's in the form the form of a coin, Polkadot, for example, or a stable coin, or any type of cryptocurrency, really. It just does depend on the program that's set up and the coin and the blockchain that it's on and the project, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Decentralized finance essentially is trying to solve the issue of going to the bank for loans and such. So you can think of it as when you go into a bank for a loan, you have to do X, Y, and Z. With decentralized finance, if the bank isn't willing to lend money, well, somebody in the world, around the world, may be willing to. For a set cost or interest rate for a set period of time, that can be contractually done up on the blockchain, legally binding. So decentralized finance is sort of opening up the door. I think it's really interesting. I really do want to learn more and more this episode, just wanting to tell you guys what I know about it, as well as... A little bit of comparisons to traditional banking. Decentralized finance has a lot of applications. So it's not just the one or the one facet where you can go and get a loan for something or get funding for something. There's the other massive project or capability of staking. Staking is probably my favorite right now where you can put up your money and then for a set period of time earn X percent interest. And that's another way. So it's not just you're going out for, you have a project, you're going out to get it funded. You can also put up your money in a much more secure way. Crypto.com has a really good program I'll talk about shortly. There's a lot of other blockchain and companies that are out there that uh, have good programs, good APRs. You just really have to do your research on that. Decentralized finance, basically we're taking out the banks and the users are more in power. Just comparing... In traditional banking, there's the argument approximately 2 billion people around the world don't have access to a bank account. Money is usually held in a bank account and that's controlled by a set institution like Bank of America or Chase, etc. Transactions can, of course, take quite a while to settle. The access to lending and borrowing, which I kind of talked about, that's restricted depending on your credit score, even if you, if you even have one. And access to banking and investing, it can be restricted. There's lower interest rates, which is good but it really does depend. You can end up with a very high interest rate on a loan, as we all know. So when we compare that with decentralized finance, DeFi, they're essentially making this accessible to anybody with an internet connection. So my point here is it's really funny where capital.com, for example, is saying, okay, 2 billion people around the world don't have access to a bank account. Well, I can only imagine how many people don't have access to an internet connection. So you have to take into account the pros and cons here of, yes, they're making a great pitch that you only need an internet connection, but then also it's like, well, there's just as many people, if not more, that don't have internet. I understand that Elon Musk is trying to circumvent that with the uh, Starlink satellites to offer people around the world internet. Also, there is satellite internet. I've been to Cuba before and it's pretty, it's pretty bad. So it's not really really great to do financial stuff on, in my personal opinion. The second thing is, is that the individuals with decentralized finance, the individuals retain complete control of their finances. So you are essentially holding your own coin in your own wallet. It can be a hard wallet or a cold storage wallet, which means it's on a wallet, like a USB key, sort of looking, they call it like a cold wallet, or it can be on Binance or Crypto.com or Coinbase, Kraken. A lot of these exchanges have wallets or wallets that are like trust wallet that just they're not really affiliated with any exchange at all. I've used them all, all pretty great. I have not myself done cold storage though, but I know it's, of course, the most secure way to uh, hold on to your finances. So you retain that control of your own finance. The bank can't deny you, like the bank can deny you access to X, Y, and Z and you're left there asking what the heck. So one really great example is one of my friends was trying to send me money. They're saying, well, we'll transfer it on this day at this time and then they'll receive it a week later or something like that. You have no control over that. 
the bank's determining when the all out's gonna happen. So the third point, which kind of lends into what I just said actually, is transactions can be settled pretty much instantly. So that's amazing. With decentralized finance, of course, we're talking about crypto, things are a lot faster. Even Bitcoin, which is slow, can be done a lot faster than sending a regular wire. The fees are also quite a bit cheaper too. It does depend on the coin. Ethereum is very expensive, but there's a lot of other coins like BNB, which is Binance's coin. Binance is the largest exchange in the world that just have really low fees and it's very quick. I've transferred that around between Trust Wallet, between BitRu and, and multiple different places and it's great, very fast, very cheap, so it's awesome. Individuals can earn, lend, and borrow assets as long as they have the necessary collateral. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, earning part. So the lending and the borrowing, that's different. There is futures. You can short a stock. You can put kind of calls and puts. You can sort of trade these cryptos. I've, I have not done that myself. I'm not very familiar with it as of yet, but hence the name Learn to Crypto. That's something we'll dive more into in a future episode. I will check into that more. But on the earning side, I'm going to talk about that just after this pretty much and uh, that's through staking. Decentralized finance, finance applications also are available 24 seven. Unlike banks, of course, they have their regular hours and they're always shut down. People are going on vacations, it's pretty crazy. DeFi, it's open 24 seven, 365. They also have much greater rates of return for deposits. So there's a lot better incentives right now, of course, on DeFi stuff because they want to incentivize you to hop on board the crypto train. Some of the uh, risks that I will say as well too, the one that really sticks out to me is that there's no insurance on this stuff. So typically the banks are protected by the FDIC, so Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, FSCS. Essentially, if the bank gives out a loan, things don't pan out, banks kind of covered, has you, has, you, has you covered on your money. So banks have their own insurance. Yes, the banks can give insurance to other people and offer that as a service, but typically the banks are insured, of, of course. And even those insurance companies actually have insurance companies. With DeFi, it's just the wild, wild west on that. If something happens, it would be, you'd have to be extremely careful, sorry, to ensure that what you're investing in is something that's holding some weight with you that is reputable, perhaps even obviously has a track record, something you can base this off of. There's some more benefits here. So DeFi is also open to anybody. So with banks, if you want to lend or get any kind of credit line, credit card, et cetera, et cetera, if you have a really bad credit score, like if you move countries or something and you don't have a credit score developed, they're not going to give you anything. They don't, they don't want to talk to you really. So with DeFi, DeFi is open to everybody. They don't care who you are. That's good and bad, of course, but take it for what it is. That is a benefit that it's open to anybody. Transparency, financial institutions, they they don't really reveal a lot of information about managing assets or, or histories and just kind of that deep data diving information. The banks don't really reveal that to their customers very often or, or if at all when you ask. With DeFi, everything has to be transparent because everything's set up by the users or set up by that coin and, and everything's set up in a more, of course, decentralized way. So that's really, really great. I really do like that. Personally, I really like DeFi because first of all, fast, right? You can transfer crypto very quickly. Second, the fees, super low comparatively to wires. The third thing is that it's in the hands of the people. Right now, yes, everything is a little bit more Mickey Mouse than it will be in the future, but I really, 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 really like that. I also don't think that neglecting the banks is the way to go by any means. I think that involving the banks in this is the way to go. I think it's gonna be impossible to get rid of banks. And so if that's the case, then we have to look at working with them. If they can use crypto to lower fees, make things happen faster, and be a little bit more open source, a little bit more open-ended. So if, if you wanna do a loan or anything like that, it's just a lot faster to get it done and it's more 24 seven and they kind of automate things a little bit better with a little bit more openness using blockchain, using crypto. I think that that's gonna be awesome. I'm not sure how exactly they're gonna do that, but I, I know that they can make that happen pretty, pretty easily. The biggest DeFi item in my mind is really this uh, staking item. So. One of the things that always caught my eye is, is crypto's going up and down, up and down, up and down. People are talking about that all the time. Oh, it's very volatile. So staking is very secure. If you want to stake your money 
or stake your coin because you can't stake your actual cash cash. You have to buy some type of crypto. Then I think staking is, is awesome. So crypto.com has a really, really nice website, really great for calculating how much you can earn. And essentially they like to advertise earn up to 14.5%. So that's per year, essentially for the deposit terms, the longest they have is actually three months. So to get that, let's say 14.5%, you'd have to do the three months for the entire year. So you'd have to keep re-upping that, renewing that. I do like this. There's a lot of different coins on here. There's also some stable coins that do about 12%, which is nice. There's some coins as low as like 2% and it's going up to, as far as I can tell here on the homepage, it's up to 12.5% with Polkadot coin. So I, I, I really like this. There's two plays here in my mind. So if you're feeling like I just want to make money off of crypto, I'm, I'm super secure. This isn't the low middle high. I'll get to that in a sec in terms of amount of investing. But if you're just like, I just want to make money and I just want to own a crypto and I want it to be super secure, that's fine. You can go with a stable coin that doesn't move and you can still get essentially 12% here, um, which is of course over the span of a year. So you'd have to do the three months, four times. So if you do that, you're guaranteed that money. Of course, you have to follow the rates and or the uh, terms and conditions. And I'm not sure if there's any nooks and crannies in there. I have not yet myself done it. When I do, I will let you know, but I've not done it. So that's essentially what they're saying, guaranteeing that money. So you, you look at 14.5% for the year. That's a pretty good year, like in terms of stocks or in terms of investing. I mean, 14.5% is keeping a lot of people happy. And for the mere fact that this is pretty much guaranteed and you're putting it in a stable coin, which doesn't move, that's pretty great. I really do enjoy that from the DeFi side of things with this staking where they have a super, super secure way to guarantee yourself income and you know what you're getting and when you're getting it, which is, I, I really, really like that. That gets a lot of scaredy cats in and entices them as well too, in my mind. A lot of the baby boomers, a lot of the older generation, of course, this is a lot more enticing. You're not planning on being super crazy with your money. This is where they're gonna go first, in my opinion. The other part is too, is if you're looking at staking a certain coin, so let's say you purchase a coin like Polkadot and you believe in the coin. It's got a good percent return. Polkadot right now is 12.5% on crypto.com. You can stake your coin. So that means they basically hold your coin for that set time. So there's a flexible term, a one month or a three month. So let's say you do three months. Your coins are locked up for three months. You're getting back that money within that time frame. Now, if that coin has increased in value, you also have that appreciation too. So if your coin is appreciating, you're getting that appreciation value plus you're getting the percent back. So whatever the 3%, if you look at investing your money into a coin that you believe in, and you can also stake it, and you're not wanting to sell your coin within X time frame, or even if you want to be flexible, it's just that the percentages go down quite a bit. They go down to like 2%, 4%, 5%, and even actually 1% I'm looking here, which is pretty that's really friggin' low. So that's something that's really worth looking into, to be honest. I really, really, really like that. Staking in terms of um, investing your money, I think is a lot safer in that respect. Now the coin can just plummet and then you can get your coin back. You can get your coins back three months later and then you lost all that value, but at least you got that, let's say, you know, three, 4%. You have to do your research once again, and you have to really make sure you know what you're investing in. You have to have a plan. Going to the low, middle, high in terms of amounts of investing. In terms of DeFi, there's also projects that you can invest in, stake your money. They have their own terms. So Polkadot had one project that just launched, or they're working on it right now, and it's like 1.3 billion Polkadot coins got staked. First, like 1.3 billion dollars worth of Polkadot coins got staked. That's cool. I'm not sure what the terms are, but they may be quite a bit different. They may hold your money for a month, for example, or they may hold it for a year, or you may be able to get out as long as your position is replaced by someone else. They can do a lot of cool stuff with that. So there are cool projects with that. I'm not super in depth on that. I'm gonna check into it and I'll, we'll come back, we'll do another DeFi session because this, this stuff is huge. Just uh, coming back to low, middle, high. So low, you know, a grand or two, and you're looking at DeFi. Yes, there's just big projects with big money that that can get big returns potentially, or you can just stake your money and build it up that way. 14.5% is pretty good. Even just building a low amount of money on a stable coin for 12% or 14.5%, whatever the percents are, depending on whether it's crypto.com, there's a lot of other places you can stake your coins, of course, a lot of other ways you can farm your coins, et cetera, et cetera. All that I'm not gonna go into right now, 
but on the low side, yeah, you can, I mean, that's that's good return. On the middle and high side, honestly, it's the same thing. 12 to 14.5% over a year is, is solid. In my mind, if you hunker down with the coin you believe in, plus you're able to get that extra 12, 14, 14.5%, that's phenomenal. The one thing that always just sits in the back of my mind about doing it and why I haven't done it yet is because I don't want to do the flexible term because the percents are too low. And then in terms of the three month terms, well, if, if it rockets and it's just hit an all time high and you really, really want to sell, you're screwed because you can't get your coin out, as far as I know anyway. And so that's kind of where I'm like, well, you don't you don't really know where this, you know, where crypto prices are going. So that's where I'm kind of cautious, but I will say I am about to do that. I am about to try it just for the sake of trying it. Do really like it. Probably gonna go with a stable coin for about 12% on a three month just to see how it goes. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But on the low middle high side, in terms of amount invested on DeFi, there's great projects out there. Do your own research and staking, whether it's 12 to 14.5%, that's an easy play all day long. So a lot of investment places, investment banks and funds and stuff like that, index funds, they can't hit those marks uh, guaranteed. They can't guarantee those types of percentages. Like a good index fund in the stock market, I'm in a few of them. Yes, they can return, you know, 18, 20% on a really good year, like what just recently happened, true. But but guarantee that not happening. That's what I really like. There's guarantees here. The disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor and all these opinions are my own based off the research I've done. Always consult your own professional advisor before investing your money. And as always, folks, please keep researching. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you thought about this uh, DeFi session here. I'll be coming out with a part two, of course. This is really in-depth stuff. But just to recap, decentralized finance is not in the hands of the bank. It's a lot faster a lot quicker, a lot cheaper. It's open to everybody all the time. No credit score needed. I think that decentralized finance in the future is going to have an amazing future, whether it's with banks or without banks. Either way, DeFi is not going anywhere, in my personal opinion. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode. Hey, community. Thanks so much for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to receive a notification when a new video drops. Have a great day, and keep on learning.